Good afternoon, Highlands. Corinne and Brooks here with your afternoon announcements. After school detention today will be in Mr. Likens room number 107. NHS is looking for 10 to 12 students to work open house next Thursday evening. This service hour opportunity is open to all current and prospective NHS members. Please see Mrs. Nash or Mrs. Hapy to sign up. All pre-ordered yearbooks have been either picked up or delivered. If you would like to buy a 2015 yearbook, please see Mrs. Geiger in the main office. Attention students, any, any student interested in auditioning or being a part of the crew for the fall show Little Shop of Horrors, the sign-up sheets are outside of Mr. Burgess's classroom, which is located behind the black box on the third floor. If you have any questions at all, please see Mr. Burgess or send him a Schoology message or email. This week's calendar clue question is, who or what am I? Clues are the company that made me has been around since the 1800s. I am a candy made in many flavors, but only two are really popular. I made the Guinness Book of World Records in 1998. Stop by the library and take a guess. Spanish Club is hosting its first meeting today after school in Mrs. Meadows room number 206. Please come by and learn more about the club. Everyone is welcome. You don't have to take a Spanish class to join us for the fun. It will be a short meeting. We will be finished by 3 o'clock. We are going to have a great year. Don't miss it. Attention freshman mentors, there will be a mandatory mentor planning meeting in the PAC immediately after school today. If you have any questions, please see Ms. Schnitzler or Ms. Thomas. Yesterday we experienced some technical difficulties. Brianna has more on the vandalism in Fort Thomas. Fort Thomas has been known to be one of the safest cities in Kentucky, with only around 200 crimes per year, making it safer than 66% of the cities in the country. However, this summer of 2015, there's been an unusual amount of vandalism happening in our city parks. On the morning of July 10th, it was discovered that Winkler Park had been graffitied. With the park being so new, people wanted it back to the way that it was before. They even raised money as a reward for whoever had information on the crime. Since then, the birdcage, as it has been known to be called by the city of Fort Thomas, has been cleaned up and is back to new. But it looks like the field wasn't enough because on July 24th, yet another park was vandalized. Based on our investigation, I don't believe that that's going to be the same individual. Um, just based on the uh, evidence that we've received uh, and developed, um, it just doesn't show that there's a relation between Winkler and Tower Park. That morning, it was discovered that Tower Park had been spray painted with blue, white, and green spray paint. The designs varied from smiley faces to words written on the slides and play places. Uh, we've reached out to the public uh, through our tip app and also we've received a bunch of tips through our tip app, uh, Senegard. Uh, we've also received a bunch of uh, information through the public, through other students. Um, we've been given some names. Uh, we've been working on that information to try to uh, get to the bottom of the crime. Uh, we're continuing with some of the leads that we have. Um, and again, just reaching out to the public has been our main focus uh, with any information that they may have. Once again, a reward of $350 was offered to anyone with helpful information on the crime. People of the community feel like their own homes have been vandalized, and they feel like it is their responsibility to find who did this and bring them to justice. So far, nobody has been brought up on the charges for the crime, and there are really no strong leads. But I have faith in my community that we will find who did this and bring them to justice. Green Club will have its first meeting Thursday in Mrs. Heiss's room number 110. Please join us. We will talk about ideas for activities this year. Over to you, Corinne. Attention former and prospective National English Honor Society members. We will have our first introductory meeting Thursday immediately after school in the library. Please be prompt. We will discuss requirements, give applications, and revote for your 2015-2016 officers. See you there. Attention juniors, anyone interested in running for a class officer position should contact Ms. Young as soon as possible. Nomination sheets are due Friday. The HHS Orchestra will be presenting the Pops in the Park concert at Tower Park on Saturday at 7 p.m. Bring a blanket, enjoy the concessions, and come listen to your favorite Broadway show tunes and movie music out on the lawn of the amphitheater. We will have the first meeting for the Powder Puff game on Monday, September 14th, immediately after school in the Media Center. Girls who wish to play and boys who wish to coach, please be sure to attend. Friday evening, October 2nd, is the date for the annual Powder Puff game. See you at the meeting. Attention seniors, the following colleges will have representatives visiting in the library. On Monday, September 14th, Kentucky Westland. On Tuesday, September 15th, Washington, EKU, and UofL. On Friday, September 18th, the University of South Carolina and Miami Oxford. If you are interested in visiting with any of these representatives, sign up through Naviance no later than 24 hours prior to the visit. The SAT will be offered October 3rd at HHS. 
The regular deadline for registration has passed, but you can still register with the late fee until September 22nd. Go to sat.collegeboard.org slash register to sign up. See Mrs. Schnitzler or Mrs. Walsh if you have questions. Please disregard our mistake from yesterday about the deadline to apply for the October 24th ACT at HHS. The real deadline is to apply September 18th. Go to actstudent.org to register. Seniors who have not met, bet, met Benchmark and any other students who would like to take the test should register no later than September 18th. Ethan has more on the construction of the sports facilities at Highlands. As you might know, Highlands has undergone a lot of construction the past year to improve the athletic facilities. Let's take a closer look to see what they've done. So how has the field house impacted the football team? Well, it gives us more opportunities to lift per individual because the small weight room, we'd have to have a certain amount of people in there without it being really cramped. Um, I gotta say the turf inside helps because on hot days we can come inside and get still stuff we would do out on the field, but it basically feels like we're inside. Um, last year was really good. The field house we had as an option because we had no turf last year and no gym last year. So Mr. Code and I had a lot of classes down in the field house, so that really helped us out. We've been really, really busy over the past year putting in multiple upgrades. Uh, we have completely renovated and replaced the, the turf. We have uh, uh, did the world's largest kitchen and bathroom remodel in the, uh, in the locker room which will have both boys and girls locker room, a new uh, referee facility, a visitor's facility, a new training room, new storage. Uh, we are completely, well, almost completely redoing the gymnasium. Uh, so the floor will remain, but we're gonna have new bleachers, air conditioning, new sound, new light, an actual jumbotron in the, in the gym. There's gonna be a new lobby that will welcome our guests at, by the end of November. Uh, I mean, I like it, it's pretty sweet. Uh, it's not like cement like the other football field was, so it's not bad, it's a lot better than before. Actually, the, the turf, not only is it visibly um, impacting our, our football team, but we've also put a tremendous number of upgrades for our broadcast film program. So there's new sound and, and video capacity as a result of the renovations that we did. Hopefully all these projects will help continue the tradition of Highlands winning state championships. Back to you guys in the studio. Students in grades 10 through 12, are you interested in a career in the health field? The Explorers program accepts between 50 to 60 students per year. The program highlights a variety of health careers, including CNA, EMT, radiologist, speech pathologist, sonographer, physical therapist, x-ray tech, etc. There is an online application that is due by September 25th. If you'd like to know more, there is a handout available in the guidance office. Brooks, back over to you. Tomorrow for lunch, we will be having on line number one, a la carte. Calzone, cheese, or pepperoni. In line number two, the grab-and-go line, corn dogs and cheeseburger. And in line number three, the hotline, taco bar, chips or soft taco. Have an excellent day, Highlands.